Board, I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of the Money Village Board for the, uh, September 24th. Uh, rise for the pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Very good. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Can we do that? God, we bow our heads now and our hearts um, to recognize that all authority comes from you, Lord. We thank you for the life you've given us today. And Lord, we think of those who are in unfortunate circumstances even right now as we pray for Dorothy, who's in the hospital. Uh, I'm sure there's other friends and family who serve here. Uh, we ask you to be with all of those concerned um, and attend to their needs, Father. Uh, I thank you for each one that you've placed in authority here on this board. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would give them wisdom as they discuss the different matters pertaining to our village. Lord, we ask, Lord, that your blessing would fall upon the village of Moni. Lord, we pray that all the discussions here, um, each person would be slow to speak and quick to listen. Uh, Lord, may your blessing just uh, fall upon the families, the homes, the schools. Uh, you watch over all of our public servants here in the village and keep them safe. And we ask your blessing to be here right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open to the public agenda items only. Please come to the podium. Good evening, Madam Chair. Today is 4731 Iris Lane. I just wanted to touch on the subject here uh, <coughs> after executive session, uh, and item M, <coughs> actually regarding executive session issues. I was wanting to know is there going to be a vote on anything that's discussed in the executive session? Because I know we don't have privy to that discussion, okay. but I understand that after discussion or whatever is done in executive session, there will be a vote on it. And I do understand, understand as far as transparency goes that the town, I feel, should do due diligence to ensure that that's carried out by when they, before they vote, the town has, a, you know, to sit out there and listen. But if they do it after executive session, there probably won't be nobody in the town. So I was hoping that the town the village, instead of voting on anything during that was discussed in the executive session, hold off to the next meeting so more people can be here to listen to what's being voted on. Mr. I get Reyes. nervous. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Reyes, the uh, purpose of executive session is to deal with matters that are of a sensitive nature more often than not. And uh, as such, there are times when uh, the nature of the discussion that takes place in executive session is really a matter of internal confidential things that pertain to either personnel or negotiations, uh, uh, litigation, different things of that sort. And the purpose for having a ongoing uh, action regarding executive session issues as a specific line item on the agenda is in the event that there were a need to take action. We're not allowed to take action in executive session. Only thing we can do in here is discuss the issues as it pertains to the village and very restricted to the topics of discussion in there. Uh, but if we do need to take action, oftentimes we need to be able to take that, uh, in some cases, swiftly. Um, and there again, it would be a matter that if it were something that once there was a consensus built and something established that it warranted public participation in some regard, then I don't think anybody here would have any problem with it being deferred. But there are times where it needs to be done a little bit more uh, quickly. So, 
that, and this has been on the agenda for you know, so Mayor. I'm uh, very sorry. I, I, I haven't been to a meeting in a long time. Like I said the other day, well, when I was here before, I didn't realize that's always a standing thing yeah. on there. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. No, but but just keep in mind that if it is an emergency issue and it has to be voted on right after executive session, maybe the town can go so as far as to do a little more due diligence to just say, okay, we're going to agreement in executive session. We are going to take action in front of the village. Let's hold off to the next board board meeting. So. The village can, you know, not know what happens behind the closed doors because we don't have privy information. I know that, but we just get a more of an open feeling about it. That's all. I hope I said it right. But I, I agree with you, and I forgot about that. Yeah, rarely have we taken action. Oh no, I know, I know that. I know that for a fact. Rarely. It does happen. It does. I've seen it happen. It could happen tonight. It could. You're right. But may I say, Mayor, when we do, we can reflect. Yes. People can see it on Channel Four. Yep. Yeah. Last time I think it was done was when uh, we picked up that piece of property on Egyptian and uh, that would have been and and years ago. That was the other administration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, anything else pertaining to the agenda? I'll close open to the public. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve consent agenda. So moved. Second. Warren and Razor. Roll call, please. Steve Gregg? Yes. Halston? Yes. Horn? Yes. Pop? Yes. Rasick? Yes. And Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Clerk? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have the election season coming up, and the Illinois Election Board has contacted us and supplied us with the uh, booklets and instructions. It's on their website. We've been instructed to direct possible candidates to that site. We are going the extra step in printing that off. That's not our forte. We're not attorneys, and we don't want to give anybody bad advice. So it's on the uh, election board website and, and available here in hard copy. Thank you. Point of clarification. Yes, sir. Um, I've had a couple requests from citizens who have indicated, and I mentioned it today, that they didn't come to the village hall to get registered to vote. Uh, they were told the paperwork wasn't available. Uh, I've had two different stories in terms of how long people have to register to vote. Do we know exactly how long we have to register to vote this year? Clark Basin. No, I don't have a specific answer. Yes, October 7th. October 7th. So, there is a grace period voting that can take place at the county subsequent to that, but that's where they register and vote at the same time, and they have to do that at the county court's office. At the county. Yeah, they can do that up to the Saturday before the election, I believe. Uh, can we put that in the minutes? Sure. Yeah. But ideally, you register now. And we do have the paperwork. I now. believe we have some extra paperwork now. Okay, thank you. Do we back. have a registrar? We do. We do. Uh, the, the, I believe the clerk, the deputy clerk, Mr. Grosso, um, are all <coughs> registrars. Those are specific hours that folks need to come in? Just the regular Just office the regular hours. Office. Deputy clerk is here most of the time. If, if somebody needs uh, somebody to come to their house and get registered, I'm, I'm sure uh, it said that's paperwork, we'll, 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 we'll travel. Minor charge. Yeah, I, would, I <laughs> can't do that, Sid. <laughs> All right. Nothing else, sir? And a report. Thank you. Um, under the mayor's agenda, um, I know it was brought up at the, at the last meeting, and again, my apologies for misinterpreting the intent of that. Um, we have subsequently uh, <coughs> begun uh, outsourcing our IT services and uh, uh, frankly it is more of a relief than I realized because it, it was a distraction from the services as the mayor I should be providing. So while I, I was bothered by the topic, it, it, frankly it's a, it's a good thing. So there's plenty of things that I need to be working on that, that actually have been a distraction for me. So uh, thank you to Trustee Gonzalez for reminding me of that. And uh, so just to let you know, we have begun that process. Um, item number, not an item number, but I know that we have a number of our officials took time out of their very busy schedules and uh, went to the Illinois Municipal League uh, for the conference this last week. 
weekend. Um, I need to apologize once again uh, for, in, in the past, I know I, 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 I'm very task oriented and um, I find myself expecting a lot and not recognizing how valuable everybody's time is because it takes time away from the family and the regular activities to, to go down there. Um, it's, it can be very tiresome and uh, while some people look at it as a social activity, uh, there's a lot that gets accomplished as far as improving our service to the community. And um, I just want to go on record as thanking each one of the officials that was able to take time out of their schedule to go down there. Um, I, I know that whether it be for one day or, or for the for the two two and a half days that were involved in that, uh, it was it was uh, a great opportunity to learn a little bit more, to observe what other communities are doing, see what the current trends are, things that we need to deal with. And if any of the trustees at this point would like to share some of what they observe while they're there, that would be fine. I'll just make a comment, if you don't mind, I, I went to three different sessions, but the one that impressed me the most, believe it or not, was the uh, demolition of buildings and abandoned buildings and things you can do about them. And a simple thing, which never dawned on me, you have an abandoned home and you get a broken window. A broken window leads to, depending on its elevation, rodents, animals, another broken window, bringing down the whole neighborhood. A simple thing like that can just escalate and, and, and really destroy a neighborhood. So I, I think uh, with our code enforcement and all that, uh, we got to be a little diligent. If we see that happening and we observe, we got to find out if it's bank owned or who, who's responsible and, and at least have a window fixed if it's that simple before it gets worse. Sure. And then they got into uh, dangerous ones too that you had to actually Public safety. Yeah, for public safety keeps people away. Yeah, so. sure. it, but it's it's very tedious. It's costly. You can let it get out of hand. So would, it was a good session. And, 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 and that ties in very closely with the department that you oversee. So that's why I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I went to a session on. Um, this is uh, called lessons learned from the village of Diamond and the village of Washington, uh, which is near Peoria. Diamond is near Cole City, but we, they suffered um, tornadoes this year. Now, hopefully we don't go through with what they've gone through, although I do remember in June of 2008, we had a, a tornado just go south of town and took out a lot of power lines and you know went through the uh, University Park uh, industrial area. So I know th this could happen to us, but uh, <coughs> learn a lot on this, and I think, uh, Ruben, I would like to meet with you at some point and review this and, as our EMA director and, and make sure we are up to speed. Even things like um, having contracts in place for um, uh, dumpsters, having that ready to go, so in case, God forbid, we do have this happen, that we can move in and clean up the debris quickly and have call centers and uh, 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 volunteer management and all those kind of things in place. Just an action plan. I, and I'm glad you're here with us as a uh, EMA director. And I'm sure you've been doing working on those things as, as well, in addition to your, your other hats you wear. But uh, it was a very good session, in addition to other ones that I went to. Um, I attended seven sessions. My brain still hasn't said it's quite familiar. There are most of them economic development sessions. Uh, I'll, I'll probably address some of those in future meetings, but probably one of the things I got out of the most was, um, and DJ and I went to one together, as a matter of fact, that they talk a lot about how villages are going together to co-op, if you will, uh, certain services, not just purchasing, but economic services. Um, and I think we got some good ideas and some good opportunities out of that. Also had, of course, an opportunity to meet a number of different people at a different level across the state that are involved. A couple economic development directors uh, from, from across the state. So it's a good good meeting. My first, so uh, it was very informative. And uh, like I said, I have a little bit of an overload from all the data and all the information I got, uh, but definitely worth our time to go. Anybody else? There was uh, several that I went to. Um, uh, 
strictly about leadership, and I went to a women in government, which is it was actually uh, okay. Um, and the legislative update was actually the first one that I attended, and our Congressman DeLuca um, was one of the, the roundtable the facil facilitator of that. And not only they were talking about the legislative updates on the House bills and the Senate bills that are up for action that directly affect us, um, not only for education, but um, like home rule and no home rule. But he is also, and I didn't realize this, a, a committee chair, I didn't know there was such a thing, um, uh, the House Committee on Villages and Towns. So our own congressman is a, the chair for that committee to help smaller towns um, be a force as, as much as the big cities um, in, the, in the state of Illinois too. So that it was a learning experience there. And ones that I enjoyed the most, frankly, um, were all strategic planning and action planning for us, knowing to as fast as we've grown, grown as quickly, quickly as we've grown, our strategic plan probably has not. So we've got some homework to do on that. Thank you very much, and I appreciate everybody taking time out of their schedule that was able to, and not everybody's able to go, uh, but it's very useful. Uh, at this time, I will turn to the officials report. Public Works. Uh, I have a couple things tonight. Um, out north, uh, Eagle Fair, we will be doing the storm uh, repairs soon. I know that was talked about a few months ago. Um, it, it is in the prime in the progress. I'm sorry, with uh, M and J, uh, it will be happening very shortly. We'll be getting that fixed. Obviously, with this weekend, you'll see the uh, the major improvement, hopefully. Um, and again, as far as this weekend goes. If folks did see some people out for Public Works on Sunday, uh, we had a whole lot of rain in a short amount of time on Saturday uh, that pretty much flooded Moni in the sewer system and they were out there on Sunday right back on working at it. So um, that was a good thing to see that we didn't just let it go until Monday morning. So Public Works, again, I, I appreciate that and hopefully the uh, folks in the village do. Um, this Sunday coming up also, the new water tower, which is behind the uh, BP uh, gas station that you see off the 57 about 16 months ago was our first cleaning out of it. This will again happen. Uh, and again, it's, it's not a harm to the water. You guys can still do whatever you want on Sunday. This needs to happen every year, year and a half. Um, unfortunately, the first time it happened, there's a not a whole lot of good stuff that you wanted to see, but hopefully we're hoping, uh, I know I use the word hope a lot, uh, to, see it, to see less filaments in this water. Um, again, the water has improved a lot. Uh, this needs to happen every year, year and a half. So, uh, and again, this will be happening Sunday, but it will not be affecting any water in the uh, water systems that's going through town, like the uh, hydro flushing. So, again, Jack and Hurley, you can do your laundry on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> um, and then one other thing, uh, starting in October out in the fairgrounds, again, the Public Works Department will be out doing the uh, crack and seal. Um, and again, as everybody knows, we are in the process of working on our streets, trying to get everything better. The big project is happening now, um, coming off the Egyptian Trail, but you will see our Public Works Department out there filling the cracks, trying to keep them as best as they can. So um, just bear with us, and again, it's not that it's not that it's being denied. It's just a work in progress, and uh, the big project uh, of fixing all the streets is is a lot of money. Uh, being involved in public works in the last six months, speaking with our superintendent um, and our engineers, it's there's a lot of money that needs to be involved in it, and I understand that everybody's uh, frustrated as I am, but it, it doesn't grow on trees, folks. Let's, Let's just bear with us and please be patient. We are trying. That is all I have. Thank you. Parks and Recreation. Um, two small things, uh, just really quickly, um, to remind everybody uh, that we have this evening or this coming Sunday. Um, it's the free music in the park. It is going to be uh, 4 to 6 p.m. The Neighborhood Blues Band Sunday, 9:28 from 4 to 6 p.m. So if you're Needing some blues on a Sunday afternoon, 4 to 6 p.m. at the Petrullo, no, at the Empire Fireman's Department. <laughs> and then, um, and the other thing too, um, one of the things that 
blessedly one of our um, churches in town for a second place church, I believe, um, is doing a Run for the Lives 5K. Um, if you would like to be involved, if you would like to donate, if you would like to register to walk, um, there is sheets that look just like this out in our lobby. So please, and if anybody asks me, go ahead and ask me what is Run for Their Lives. Um, the second place is involved that for human trafficking. They're trying to raise money against human trafficking. So obviously a very worthwhile thing. So thanks to them for doing that too. End of report. Thank you very much. Business development. No report. Finance? Um, I don't see uh, Daryl here, but I know he's working on the numbers for uh, fall fair. I saw some preliminaries uh, today. I know it's not meant to be a money-making endeavor for us, but it's not meant to be a money-losing endeavor. So we're, we're probably going to break even maybe a few thousand above where we were. So I'll have, should have numbers next time. Thank you. Building department? Public safety reports. Thank you. Attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. I have three items for the board's consideration. The first item, I believe we received a request from GTR Human Cooling. Uh, the gentleman in the audience tonight. The board recalls we signed a redevelopment agreement with the company roughly three or four years ago. We developed uh, Nice to the property on Governor's Highway. He's requesting a TIF payment of $30,000. Uh, he has submitted adequate invoices uh, proving that he incurred well over the $30,000, but he, he is asking for reimbursement of $30,000. Uh, Mr. Batista, I believe you reviewed the information provided on that. It was a, it's a very thick. Set of papers. <laughs> I mean, I said I didn't want to give uh, the board a, a hernia with, uh, with the size of this uh, packet, but I did review it, and there's well over $250,000 worth of improvements, uh, paid invoices, receipts uh, for the property. Okay. And uh, so at this point, he's asking for the. So I move to approve payment. I'll second. There you go. Holston and Razor, any further discussion? When's the open house? I mean, the ribbon the, cutting. The ribbon cutting. We're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna try and do it um, around Christmas. You know, around the holidays. We still have. We're still unpacking boxes. You know, it's and we're just going into our busy season season two. So I'm still trying to run my business and still just trying to get in. I got old pictures and everything else, but you guys will be the first to know. Oh, well, looks great. Nice. Nice job. Thank you very much. They've already done our service calls. All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Holston? Yes. Ford? Yes. Bob? Yes. Rasick? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Great. Yes. Next item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next item is the board recalls to start a tentative deal with uh, Budrick Truck Lines in the last board meeting with respect to the redevelopment agreement. Uh, I understand they closed on the Property, I believe last Friday. Uh, we should have the final form for the board's uh, review at the next board meeting. They did incorporate the changes that the mayor uh, and the board brought up at the last meeting. There's got to be a couple minor changes in there, but overall, we made a lot of progress. But they did, my understanding, they did close uh, based on the representation that we have in the deal. We have a deal with them, but they, they do own that property up there now. So they'll be up at the next board meeting. Okay. Thank you. The third item, Your Honor, is uh, they have to draft an ordinance amending Title IV, Chapter 2, Section 2C of the Village Code. Basically, this pertains to uh, the maintenance and the grass uh, cutting of certain property. We amended it to uh, indicate that it's actually zoned property that would, if it's over one acre, would be exempt from more other than the first 30 feet. What we're attempting to do through the efforts of the Public Works Department is uh, have the other properties, such as industrial, commercial, and properties less than one acre, be responsible for maintaining it themselves. So all this was limiting who would be exempt from mowing the entire site. 
So what I did is change it to the same zone agriculture if it's over one acre of any size. Right. So anything that's in a commercial industrial areas would still have to adhere to those standards. And, and as the attorney indicated there, one of the things we've run into is uh, stormwater management has been negatively impacted by the lack of care for some people's properties. And even with the vacant, it doesn't mean they haven't caused those problems. So, uh, yeah. that, um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve that, and then if we have it, we'll have it next time. I would make that motion. I'll second. Hot and Gonzales. Ordinance number seven. Is it solely a motion in the second one? Still discuss. I just want to mention you were very lighthearted about the impact that that has on our, on our water system. It's very so costly much, for very us so. to correct some of the problems, and we did spend some money trying to correct one problem. Well, we have a timeline right now, Mr. Krizel. If you want to remind the the board briefly the, uh, the situation we're in and, and pertaining to that. Uh, if you like, sir. Uh, good evening. As you may recall, the board approved a stormwater management committee uh, fund that uh, we submitted to be able to help with our wetland delineation problems that we have and stormwater management plans, uh, where they, in fact, we uh, received a grant for twenty-seven thousand matching funds. Matching the board approved it to go ahead and use these funds to be able to help clean up some of these areas. And in doing that, we found that some of these properties that were within these areas were neglected due to that restriction on that ordinance. So uh, this is kind of cleaning up that ordinance based on the fact of trying to clean up the stormwater and get, it, get, get the water burning where they have to go to reduce flooding and, and any kind of severe rain event. So. Yeah, uh, but we said, again, you know, you get the water away, but, but you know, keeps the, the streams flowing, the flooding from happening, the mosquitoes away, it helps kind of reduce a lot of the, the things that we have going on. Uh, so this is kind of a follow-up in that to help get those property owners that have these lots that want to move them or sell them to, to take the responsibility of the maintenance and so that the, it's less that the public works was responsible for it, or we can charge a fee to do it if we have to do it in-house and at least recoup those costs. Two questions. Uh, you mentioned the word wetlands. Uh, does that include any land that might, I guess my concern would be there might be some lands that are actually designed to be uh, where you want to grow uh, because it's uh, an area where you might have a pond in the immediate area or something like that. Does this going to include that? Uh, in this particular case, uh, in some of these uh, the lots that we're talking about, there is a wetland that goes through, but it's not a conventional wetland where you would see the cool pond. Um, this would only, uh, in any of the wetlands that we found, and when I say wetlands, it's just a more swamp area that, if left untreated for too long, automatically kind of falls into that wetland area. Um, we've done some uh, delineation in those wetlands to be able to identify markers as to what it is, and then we work around those in, in keeping our distance so that we don't disrupt anything in there. But any species that's in that wetland, get flower, tree, shrub, a lot of light doesn't get disrupted and we have the approval to do that beforehand. So no environmental. No environmental impact on that for the specific <laughs> one. We've already taken the steps to make sure that in the areas that we're having a lot of the stormwater problems leaving the municipality has already been identified. Okay. And in the interest of self disclosure and I've discussed this already with the mayor. Uh, where I work uh, at the uh, UTI facility out here we have a field that goes from the uh, lot up to the fence, uh, which is a fence for noise uh, mediation. Uh, we have what we call burn there that we purposely let grow for, and only move twice a year so that it keeps the sound to a minimum. It helps to beat down the sound. That area is not used by any of the public. There's no drainage in that area. But my concern is that's not covered in this. So is it possible for us to add something to this that would cover something like that, not just for my company, but for other companies? Because burns serve a purpose that might be, in this case, an environmental purpose to reduce the sound. Yeah, and I, I think with the 
with the preamble, if you will, of what our intent is to try to remedy the situation, that is not one of the concerns, but the concern would be, and so in those situations where there, it's, it's, a, it's strategically what grow, I would think that would be something that we would be able to, by an internal policy, have an agreement with the property owner, or even by a, a, perhaps an additional amendment to the ordinance. Um, I'm not sure how the wording would read because it'd have to be very specific that it would. Otherwise, because if you if you're not if you don't give the specifics on it, then everybody say, well, I'm I'm growing the these tall grasses just to. I completely understand, but the opposite of that could be true as well. You could have some people who use this against a, a business that's legitimately trying to use do this something right with this. I would think in the situation you're describing there, where it's clearly being used for assistance in mitigating sound transmission, I would think that there would be a way that we could address that from a just a simple policy agreement with the core understanding internally. Um, Develop agreement? Yeah, something. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, for it, development, it, so we can monitor it. And it's still, it's still at that point, still say not to exceed a certain, you know, I would say. 12 inches or something of that sort, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. In the section two, Mr. Bishop, it says an agricultural zone is the one that you might, so mm -hmm. it's only agricultural. Is that zoned agricultural? No, design? it's not zoned agricultural. Okay. everybody else's to make up for it, or we have to tax everybody additionally in order to compensate for that. So I'm trying to figure out here because we have a better rate for our garbage, as an example, than most of the other neighboring communities. Thank so you. I'm just trying to identify here, what is your recommendation that we do? You want us to charge everybody else no. that's not a senior? I, I'm just, because that's what ultimately would have to happen. I don't know how that works, um, but I do know like the vehicle sticker. That has gone up, that has doubled. That, that was a $5 charge a year, then it went to $10 for two years, and now it's $20 for two years. So everything has gone up. Um, but our, unfortunately, our Social Security has not gone up. And, and we do not use the amount of water that most people use. We have one bag of garbage, the majority of us. And I broke the cost down, and it's like three three dollars and seventy five cents for one bag of garbage a week. Sure. I mean, that's 
a lot of money on it, you know. Unfortunately for us, they'll hire uh, <coughs> an accounting firm to manage the specifics of how much trash each household contributes to that. Or the, the way the garbage company does it with us is they charge us per stop. And that's the only way they measure it because if the garbage truck has to stop and pick up a tote, it doesn't matter if I only have one bag today or if I have 20 bags. I mean, they're, they're charging us all based on the number of stops they're taking. And they average that overall for the entire village. Um, to offer a senior discount. As much as I'd like to be able to find some creative way to do that, the only way that would take place would be on the back of all the other residents. So, I, 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 if, you, if you've got 400 signatures of people that are seniors that would benefit from this. Well, this is all over town. I don't understand that. But if, if you got 400 signatures of seniors that would benefit from this, I, I, I understand. I'm sympathetic to that. Um, I'm not quite a senior yet, but Give me a couple of years. Um, Want to sign the petition? You don't <laughs> I already asked him. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, because I, I, I already understood the problem. And um, I think if you're to circulate a petition like that in good, you know, understanding what's going on there, the, uh, somebody else would circulate the same thing saying they don't want it. Uh, partly because for you to get the discount means that they're going to have to pay after to the capital. But they use more than we do. It's the, 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 the water is based on consumption, it's based on usage. The, the rates Isn't are that rounded up though? As far as your meter reader, you round it up rather than it's an a, actual reading? It's a thousand gallon increment. So if you're using low this month and next month you use high, it's just a thousand, thousand gallon increments. So one month it might run high just because it just flipped over the, the, the mark one month, but it doesn't mean that. I mean, you're still getting metered exactly for usage. It's just a matter of one month might be high, another month might be low, because if you're splitting the bubble on a 500 gallons and it might flip up or down one month or another, but you're still getting charged exactly for your usage. So, and, and, it's, and, and a utility service, be it garbage or be it water, um, it's, it's all based on consumption and usage. So, uh, Mr. Gray, you know, you, you may use more water than I do. You know, you pay more than I do. The result of that. Mr. Gresbeck, you know, you may not use a whole lot of water, but you're still paying your, your, your share for the water you're giving. <coughs> so, I mean, we all pay based on usage. That's the way it's designed, that's the way it's implemented. If we were to reevaluate that, and we could, um, what would end up happening would be we would end up having to charge other people more to make up for that. But if you had a larger bill, I mean, you use more, you would you know, pay more normally anyway. You don't use much, so you don't pay much. Well, I pay that's a lot, but I pay $92. I understand. It's a good, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. And just for the point of reference, too, and I hear you loud and clear, and if there's 450 people that signed that, the, we just had to reevaluate the way water was charged in this town, in the village, you know, um, several months ago. So I'd be happy to, to kind of break it down as well as our finance director, too. He'd probably be happy to meet you. So you understand the math and why we had to do what we do. Um, but that being said, if we need to explain it to 450 people, or if we can somehow work out something else, you know, to make the cost savings, I'm sure there was nobody up here on this, you know, up here in the front of this room that wouldn't be willing to talk to you about it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Good evening. This is address back 25654 Firestone. I just want to make the board and the public aware that the Gulf Vista volunteers will be assisting in open voting or early voting beginning on October the 20th, which is a Monday, through Saturday, November the 1st, and they'll be here at Village Hall. The hours Monday through Friday will be 10 to 4, the hours on Saturday, 9 to noon. Thank you. And just so everybody is aware, that is entirely a volunteer program that was uh, put together. And it, it's short staffed as we are. Uh, that's a huge uh, appreciation goes out to everybody that participates in that and helps us out with that. Because voting and early voting is a very important aspect of what goes on in uh, selecting representative government. And it's very important. So appreciate Sid and everybody else that's involved in that process. Jackie Harlan, 25620 Shoal Creek Drive. I would just like to publicly say thank you 
to all of you that um, came out to our Mohai fundraiser uh, that supports Gulf Vista and many other parks in the whole state. Uh, we were just very pleased with the participation that we had at the, um, at the outing, and it was a successful outing, and thank you very much. Political announcement: uh, St. Paul's Church is having their annual Oktoberfest this weekend on Saturday. Um, there will be all kinds of events, bands, crafts, uh, from 10 to 6, I believe. Jimmy, right? So I want to make sure the public knows that. I'm sorry. What, what was your address? Can you say your name is <laughs> Jim Pop. <laughs> David Holston. Five three two six West Money Main Money. Thank you. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> now this is going to be the first one you missed in a long time, isn't it? So, all right. I'll close open to the public. Uh, Mr. Gurchewski, I believe we do have something for executive session tomorrow. Yes, sir. If the board and the clerk will join me in the executive session. Uh, I'm sorry, we need a motion to. Make a motion. I'll second. So, Ray, Ray, I'm 716. to come out of executive session. Made. Second. Holston and Pop. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Gray? Yes. Holston? Yes. Horn? Yes. Pop? Yes. Grasic? Yes. And Gonzalez? I'm at 739. Yep. Under item M on the agenda, action regarding executive session issues. Hold on a second. talking in the background. It's really kind of annoying. <laughs> 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 for the uh, Office of Assistant Administrator, and I'm looking for a favorable motion and a second for that. I got my second. I'll make a motion. All right, motion, second, second and, and that is effective immediately. Did you say assistant administrator? Assist, yeah, correct. Correct. Uh, I'm, a, I'm recommending, if I want to re re-clarify this, I'm recommending the appointment of Ruben Batista for the Office of Assistant Administrator effective immediately. And uh, is, is that okay with the first and the second on there? You guys okay with that? Just clarifying that? That was a uh, basic move in five seconds. Sure. Okay. Roll call, please. Trustee Holston? Yes. Trustee Pop? Yes. Trustee Rasick? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Gray? Yes. Trustee Horn? Abstain. Okay. Um, nothing further on the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. Brasic and Holston. Roll call, please. Trustee Horn. Yes. Pop. 
Yes. Greasick? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Craig? Yes. And Holton? Yes. Minnesota 42. 